anyway, you put me off. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, coming from afresh, coming from afar, it's, it's time DCT. for TC two C three pod DTCR. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. This is two C three pod does the cinema. Yep, our weekly ventures to the cinemas this week brought us to a preview screening of a film coming out tomorrow. Yes, that's tomorrow if you're listening on release day, Wednesday the twenty. 20- Dylan, help me. 27th. 27th. Today's Wednesday the 27th? No, uh, yes. Yeah. So yeah. the 28th yeah. yes. will be the release so date. So Thursday yes. the 28th of November, just to confirm that. Yes. Yes. So Thursday the 28th <laughs> of November will be release date for this film. Yeah. And we have already seen it. And yes. I'm very excited about it. And yep. I am excited about the fact that we get to talk about it before it comes out. Oh, my God. Instead of a week oh, after it's already it coming on. Yeah, I know. First time in a while. Yeah. Naughty boy. All righty. We yes. saw a film written and directed by Ryan Johnson, who's- Famous for Looper and making a horrible and, Star Wars movie. Yes. Um, I don't necessarily blame him wholeheartedly mm. now seeing another Ryan Johnson film called Knives Out. That's right. Knives Out, the murder mystery comedy thriller starring yes. a ridiculously stacked, talented cast. Absolutely. Just to name a few. Daniel Craig, Chris Evans, Tony Collette, Jamie Lee Curtis. Carry Chris- on. Christopher Plummer, Catherine mm-hmm. Langford, uh, Don Johnson, and the main character, essentially, Anna- De Armas? Yeah, I, I, yeah. Unsure how to pronounce that. However, it, it, yeah, she must a- be Anna fairly De Armas. Yeah. yeah, Anna De Armas. So I'm just going to call her Anna. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, essentially, mm. the plot revolves around a family coming together for the fathers. So mm-hmm. Christopher Plummer's character's 85th birthday. Uh, at the very end of the birthday, yeah. spoiler alert: he dies. <gasps> <gasps> Shock and awe. <laughs> it, it turns into a a it, it, murder it, mystery comedy. It turns into a who done it. Yes. It turns into a who done it in the best way. Yeah. And so that's the basic plot thing and we are going to avoid spoilers in this, yes? I'm going to try my best. Okay, good, because yeah. I'd very much like to because I feel like this is a film worthy of everybody's attention yep. and when you go to see it, I want you guys to enjoy the twists and the turns as they come because they they do come. Yes. They do come uh, thick and fast. Yeah. My, my, my straight off the bat, so we've roughly summed up the plot, but straight off the bat the thing that took me most off guard by this film was about 45 minutes in, you find out what happened. And you're like, I'm sorry. I, I literally yes. checked my watch and went, what? There's like over an hour to go. What? What? See, like, that, that's it. I'm glad you I, brought that up yeah. because I wasn't sure how I was going to say this because yeah. I didn't write anything down yeah. for this review. Neither did I. Um, mm. I had the same feeling that they mm. revealed a massive plot point, essentially. Yeah. Fe- like, as you said, about 40, 45 minutes in. Yeah. And the remainder, there was a middle chunk of the film where they kind of work out how they're going to get around this particular situation. That's right. Mm. It all makes sense and it wraps up towards oh, the end. Yes, perfectly. But I feel that it, it, it took me off guard is that I, I expected this entire movie to be, to be a- To be a done it. Done it. Yeah. Like, you know, but, but- That's exactly what I was- And the yeah. way it was gearing up as well with Daniel Craig and the other two police officers like in, interrogating and investigating. Yeah. I thought that it was going to be gearing up and everybody has these reasons as to why they could have done it kind yeah. of thing. And then just out of nowhere, you find out and you're like- Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Like, how are they going to stretch this out and make it good? Yeah. Like, how are they going to keep this entertaining? How are they going to keep us guessing? Because we just got told what happened. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, mm. it, it's sort of- it, Apologies, everybody. Rude! It unravels, mm. essentially, like, what they're going to do about the particular- Fuck off. Oh, my it God. Un, it unra- Silent. It unravels- What was I getting at now? Yeah. So, yeah. it unravels the story mm. about, like, what they're going to do about this particular situation and the conundrum exactly, that the main characters yeah. are in. Yes. Um, but I was expecting, as we said, this mm. whole thing to be, like, a, a whodunit kind of situation. Yeah. So, that kind of killed it for me that, in the end, they were all essentially trying to work out who was going to get the will. Yeah. Of this well, massive- Well, that, that, similar- that, was, that was the main crux of everything as yeah. well, because there were certain elements of that um, birthday party that you find out- Throughout his investigation and uh, poking and prodding and pulling apart all the little fine clues, yeah, um, is that they all really only cared about the money. Like, yeah, every character th- only cared about the money. And yeah, yeah, it, it, I, I just got to say, man, I enjoyed this top to bottom. Yeah, I really did. Like, I know off air, you briefly mentioned it and you said that you just weren't feeling it. And like you said, I have kind of took you off guard and then took. It went a different way than expected. It's, it's just because mm. I was gearing up to see a different film. So yes, I, we, we I, changed this at the last minute. So. Yeah, I went into a murder mystery mm. comedy. Uh, expecting expecting a, a comedy horror. Yeah, well, not mm. expecting for this direct movie, but no, in, no, no, I was yeah, in the mood yeah. for a different movie. Yes. Um, Daniel Craig, who plays- Benoit uh, Blanc. Benoit Blanc. Oh, Blanc, uh, that's right. Uh, like, it's, it's Blanc. He's oh. a very highly Kentucky uh, character of a private investigator. And I, it took me like- 
two like like an hour and a half like pretty much the movie's length to kind of get used to his accent really i really enjoyed it oh thank god because, really- because the second he finally said his first line because you see him floating in the background a little bit yeah the second he opened his mouth and started talking i was like he was made yeah. for this. And I, I loved it. I was paying I so much attention it. to his acting and his, vo- his oh. voice the entire time to see whether he would slip up at all. No. Because if there's one thing I hate, it's when <coughs> actors who mm. are cast to play different, well, not necessarily ethnicities, but different yeah, languages, no, no, no. different voices. Yeah. Like uh, when you hear like an American try and play a Pommy accent or vice versa, yes, or if they yes. play an Australian accent, mm. like nobody ever does an Australian accent like an Australian. It doesn't no, happen. No. It, it, the well, closest it, we've it, gotten is Robert Downey Jr. in Tropic Thunder. That's yeah. the closest <laughs> we've ever gotten. That, sadly, that's true. But even in our YouTube video about top five Australian films, yeah. I put on an Australian accent. And to it like, sounded to, terrible. Say, yeah. I'm like, dinky do. And I'm like, wait, why? I'm just talking normal. What the fuck? Like, yeah. 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 But no, I completely agree with you. And as far as I could see, he was flawless. Yeah. He was yeah. flawless. Like Daniel Craig, he's my MVP for this whole film. Yes, absolutely. Like, don't get me wrong. Everybody else on that list is amazing. And they yeah. played their characters to a T. Yeah. But Daniel Craig is Benoit Blanc. Yeah. He, he He's just- Oh, it's just so good. I want to see it again. Yeah, I, re- I, do, I, I definitely I really wanna- do. I want to go and digest it again and see if I can pick up the little nuggets along the way. That's why I hadn't written mm. anything down because I feel like if with a second- uh, watch through. I yeah. think I would appreciate this movie a lot more and and mm. realize things more than what I saw in my first run through because this yeah. movie yeah. definitely has its twists and turns. Mm. There'll be scenes where uh, like the characters will be speaking to each other and then yeah. they'll have certain emotions which you think the emotions are in direct yes. uh, connection to the conversation mm. when it turns out the emotion is actually them realizing something completely exactly. like, left field. Like yeah. uh, Chris Evans. Uh, oh. We all know he's a phenomenal oh. actor, and he was a bit of a left field casting choice for this film. I feel like he was cast because of his popularity. Well, it seemed that way, but but because he's mm. so good at what he does oh. and showing emotion in particular moments, fair enough. He comes in sort of happy go lucky, mm. but things become a little more real. My uh, my, my favorite three quarters of the way through, I think yeah. it really oh. conveyed that really well. So 100%. the storytelling mm. by a bloke named Ryan Johnson, obviously, like he's done a few hit and misses. Yeah, I feel like this is very much a, a craft of love and affection. Absolutely, this. This is yep. definitely one that he sat down for a while and like planned and, and every single step like no uh, yeah. fine tooth comb yeah but um uh chris evans yes yep. just speaking on him quickly i thought the same thing where in the trailer he's a pretty heavy feature yeah but i think it was around that 45 minute mark where you find out what happened kind of thing yeah that's when he finally says his first line yeah like he's very briefly seen in a couple of flashback scenes mm-hmm. kind of thing and then yeah he's just not there yeah. Even probably for even the first hour or so. And then he does become essentially like the main plot point. Yes. To say like the the, the third quarter of the oh, film. Yeah. But at the in the last quarter, in the final act, essentially, each character in the family, mm. they all have an equal role to play. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as where the movie kind of spaces it out a bit. There is one actor though. Oh, Michael Shannon. I do have to shout out to him. I love Michael Shannon in just yeah. about fucking everything. Mm. Um, but there is one actor in here who I feel could have been played by somebody else because I okay. feel that her talent was- I, I feel that she mm. could play better roles than what she was given here, and that's Tony Collette's character. Uh, okay, yes, I, I will say that, yeah. Um, she I, played I, a ditzy blonde, which I feel could have been done by anybody. And Yes, yes, but at the same time, like, she really did bring something to it where, yes, she was a ditzy blonde, but she still had her little wits about her. Like, she was still working the system a little bit and- and, and her cover-ups and that, like, as in all of them during the interrogations and that. Yeah. They all get found out a little bit about particular things, but then they all lie about what actually happened kind of thing to yeah. throw the detective off. Yeah. And no, I think she, I think she, she obviously played the character well. I understand what That's you're what saying. I mean. That's what I mean. The acting else was good. I just didn't really like that character as a whole. And I feel yeah, like okay. because of that, I think because of Hereditary and her- mm acting chops yeah, in that film. Yeah. I've put her on a bit of a pedestal okay, of okay. being like, she's better than this character. Yeah. All is right. all I'm saying. You no, know? I, so, I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying to find um, the actor who played the lawyer who read the will. I cannot, he's, he's a pretty big deal. Okay. I, I'm just trying to find that. But yes, no, I, I believe, yeah, I get what you mean. Tony Collette could, that character could have been played by anybody. But at the same time though, I mean, I'm not going to turn down Tony Collette and thank you for pulling that up. So, yeah, we have the um, lawyer who reads the will and like helps them through some of this kind of stuff and all that, and it's Frank motherfucking Oz. Frank Oz. Now who you only ever I, see every few years. No, no, no. I wanted to bring it up because this 
was his first on-screen yeah. film role in 20 years. Yeah, because you've only ever heard 20 his voice. 20 years because he's the Muppets. Like Yoda. Yeah, exactly. He's yeah. a big voice actor deal. Like, it, it's a huge deal. And Ryan Johnson, I assume through his connection through Star Wars- True. Has yeah. probably got him into this and he probably read the script and was like, hell yeah, yeah, I'm in. Because his first role in 20 years. I mean, it's not a major playing role. No, but at the same but it's time, good to see his face. At the same time, like, as in he knocked it out of the park. First, yeah. first time on camera on a film in 20 years. And Frank Oz, congrats, mate. It was fantastic. The, the, the strange thing about that, too, is that you, without recognizing who he is as an actor, mm. you wouldn't tell. Mm. Because he's always putting on a voice. He's like exactly. And a he, professional voice actor never uses their natural voice. And this is him just being him. Yeah. And it's great. It's like, fantastic. I didn't, I didn't yeah. catch it until afterwards when I was like, oh, I love this film. I just wanted to do a bit more digging and was like, what? Frank Oz. Yeah. Like, it really didn't click because I just don't recognize the face. But top to bottom, this cast yeah. is flawless. Yep. Flawless. There wasn't a weak link. I know you said the character that Tony Collette plays, um, Joni. Yeah. I, That's I, I, my I weakest link. Just not, not, the, no. not the actor. The character is all. In yeah. all honesty, her daughter Meg, um, by Catherine Langford, who's yep. fantastic. Yes, I feel like her character should have had more time. Yep. Like uh, Joni, I understand why that could frustrate some people. That she particular seemed to character. be a more of a friend. I wouldn't say a best friend, but a closer friend to the main actress. No, or the main right. character essentially. Yeah, no, that's right. Masha. Yeah. Yes. No. Uh, Anna De Armas, as we said, is the main focal point on the female side of things. Yep. Then you've got jo um, Jamie Lee Curtis and Tony Collette underneath there. But yeah, no, she's not related to the family, but she's a big part of their thing. But anyway. Overall feelings, vibes. Yeah. Man, I love this film. Yep. I really did. I thought this there was two hours there and it flew by. Yeah. Like, there was, like I checked my watch once and that's, oh, when, yeah. that's when the big reveal happened and I was like, what? Where do we go from here? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Where are they going to take this? But I think Ryan Johnson did a fantastic job. The cast top to bottom, as I said. Yep. It's fantastic. Um, did Prince you have a favorite? Uh, do we want to oh. do favorite moments or anything? Uh, I don't really have a favorite moment. I feel, as I said before, I feel like I'm going to have to watch this movie a second time. Yeah, big time. After watching mm. it, I walked out of the cinema and I, I saw one of my cousins who I haven't seen in a few years. Shout out to Zach. He actually listens and watches the show. So hey. shout out to you, guys. Yeah, nice. Um, he, he had a similar feeling to me where mm. the middle yep. felt a little bit slowish and it kind of slowed things down a bit yeah. because that's when the reveal happened. Yeah. But- uh, First third of the movie, last third of the movie was really good. Yeah. So for me to give this a proper appreciation, I will mm. have to watch this again. No, that's fair. Uh, I feel I won't get, get time to go to the cinemas to watch it again, but when it comes out on Blu-ray and DVD, yeah. I'll certainly be buying it, I feel. Yeah, uh, oh, definitely. So I don't, I can't think of a, the only moment that mm -hmm. pops out to me when I hear, when I think of favorite moment yep. is the moment where they call, what's it, Jaden Martel's character, Jacob Trump. Thrombry, sorry. Yes. They call him oh. like- They just keep referencing the fact that he's in the toilet. He's like a Nazi and he's, and he's masturbating. <laughs> yeah, he's masturbating to like deer porn or something. Like, yeah. There was like, a throwaway line in there that I yeah. can't quite remember, but I just remember finding it hilarious. I, I actually completely forgot that he was in this film. Yeah, he like, was only a yeah. very small role. No, yeah, Jaden um, Martell out of yeah. chapter one and two. Yeah. yeah. No, but um, yeah, no, I, I don't have a particular favorite moment either because there was so much going on, yeah. like you said, that- Honestly, I just enjoyed the ride, but there were several laugh out loud moments. Yeah. Everybody to perfection. If I'm going to give this a pretzel rating, man, out of- I'm going to go out of 10. Yep. I'm going to give this a solid 8.8. .8. All right. Like, I, I truly enjoyed every minute of this film. But like I said, MVP, Daniel Craig. Yep. Daniel Craig. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm going to give this a fantastic. rating out of 10 as well, you know, not that I've really got a particular structure for that. No. Is the dog trying to get through or is that the wind? No, that's the wind. But okay. anyway, carry on. Uh, I'll give it a 7. A seven. But okay. may, as I said, it may go up in later viewings, but for I now- I feel like it, it will go up, Yeah, man. I feel like it's going to go up. It was the same to me with another Ryan Johnson project, Looper. I yeah. enjoyed Looper at first, but then I watched it a couple more times, really like tore it apart, dissected yep. it a bit more, and I rate that film now. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, yeah, no. So, absolutely. Knives Out in theatres tomorrow. Absolutely. The 27th, uh, 8th of- November. Yep, it's not December just yet, but no, we're that's very right, close. We're yes, getting no, there. Uh, it comes out tomorrow because this review is fresh up on YouTube on Wednesday. Absolutely. Yeah, no. So, hey, if you get the chance to go out and see a, a, a funny, murderous crime thriller mystery, yep. this is the one. Absolutely. This is the one. Stacked cast, talented writer, director, everything you could possibly want out of a- Trip to the cinema. Yeah. And push that's what we did. Push aside what you how you feel about The Last Jedi, because this guy, you know, he may not have been the right choice for a Star Wars film, but exactly. he's great for these kind of 
mystery thriller sort of movies, well, well, you know, he's like great have for, he's great for property points. properties that he is taking from the yeah. ground up. Yep. So th- this is his property that he started with and wrote it from the ground up. Yep. Star Wars, obviously, he had a lot to work with. So yeah, yeah. But either way, Knives Out in theaters probably now when you're watching this, and man. Go and have a good time because it is a great watch. Absolutely. Mm. And that has been our show. Episode whatever number episode this is. You didn't catch that by the episode title? No. WD what? Nope. You have to explain that one to me. WD-40. Well done. Oh, right. Okay. Well, <laughs> get, the duct tape. get the duct tape. Anyway. Yes. Listen. But whoa, that was a big crack. We are Two's Company. Three's a podcast. You can find us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Mm. Uh, we are everywhere at 2C3Pod, as the picture suggests. That's right. And don't forget, you can watch or listen to us on Podbean, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. YouTube. Big, big Summer, summer blowout. blowout. Now, we have reopened our tea Public store where you can find a T-shirt, a mug, a sticker or a magnet or yes. a hoodie i know the magnets is what i'm i'm leaning towards that absolutely mm-hmm. if you do want to support the show in a way that you do get something in return rather than paying into a patreon that gives you what you already get for free anyway exactly head over there and buy a t-shirt it'll be mm. with you shortly and it's great quality go check them out coming up to christmas we need that extra bit of coin as well <laughs> thank you but if you yeah. wanted to contact us directly in any regard Two's Company Threes a Podcast at gmail.com. Absolutely. Mm. We have two podcasts every Ooh. week, every Wednesday Ooh. and every Friday. We have four videos on YouTube every week, whenever we can get them out. There's bloody heaps happening here. That's right. Lots of content. Dylan, next line. That's, yeah, I forgot, sorry. I forgot yeah, about no, that. You're well, no, yeah, that's fine. Next line. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> we are Two's Company. Wait. Oh, no. I'm Mitchell. You're Dylan. And we are Two's Company. And you... you. Ah, the podcast. Thanks for tuning into that video by Two's Company Freezer Podcast. Don't be sad though, there's plenty more where that came from. Another cheeky video right there. Maybe even hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Or if you don't like our faces, check us out on Podbean, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or YouTube.